Welcome to The Thriving Christian Artist, the podcast where we hope you connect with God to bust through the roadblocks that have held you back for years, create the work you love, and really live the life you know God created you to live as an artist in His kingdom. I'm Matt Tama, your host. Let's get started. Well, hey, everybody. It's Matt Tommy, and welcome to the podcast. I'm really excited to have my friend, artist and gallery owner and I want to say mentor to artists too, uh, Phil D'Angelo, who it's right here in Asheville's River Arts District, right up the street from me. So Phil, thank you so much for taking the time to be on today. Hey there, Matt. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Awesome. You know, you actually were one of the very first uh, artists that I met when I moved to Asheville and kind of started exploring the River Arts District and had pity on me and was like, I'll be, <laughs> I'll be nice to this guy. <laughs> I remember that. Yeah. That's right. You're thinking, who is this guy coming to my studio? <laughs> he does what for a living? You know. Yeah. So, yeah. It's been so good to get to know you and Tina over the years, and just uh, hear your story. And that's really why I wanted to for us to talk today because I I know that so many other people are going to get uh, just a lot of inspiration from your story of, of where you've come from, what you do now, and uh, just everything that you are. So. It's a, it's going to be a good time. So well, I appreciate that. I hope, I hope somebody can glean something from it. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, let me say this. Um, you know, a lot of times I know when people come in my gallery, and I'm sure it's the same way with you. They kind of see your life uh, in the place that it is now. You know, you, they see, you know, you've got this gallery and your work selling and all this kind of stuff, and people think, "Wow, Phil's living the dream." It's always been like this, and mm-hmm. yet it's. <laughs> It's not always been like this. So take us on a little ride of kind of how you got to where you are now. Like, you know, did you grow up in a creative family? Have you always been an artist and and that sort of thing? And uh, just kind of walk us through who is Phil? Well, um, I did. I grew up in a a family where uh, my mother was an artist, um, although she really never did anything with it. Um, Mm. And my father was a banker. So kind of a opposite ends of the scale there but you know works out well just like the relationship with my wife who sure. is really the brains of our <laughs> our gallery and, and and all that we do um but uh yeah I was always influenced by my mother um you know watching her do things and she would uh do crafts with uh myself and my sister and our friends and I remember this mural she painted in her bedroom over their bed and it was uh, just this Asian village and as I watched her paint it was just pretty it was pretty neat Uh, it always spoke to me and told me a story and there were uh, people out in the rice paddies and there were waterfalls and little villages and there was just it was life it was um, and story which uh, I try to impart in my work Um, I just love that idea of story and Um, so, uh, I think my, my mother was obviously my first influence in my work, um, and, and kind of wanting to pursue that. Uh, and then I got into, you know, as I got a little older, I got into comic books and just wanted to, you know, draw there. So I got into doing, uh, uh just tons of drawings all day long. That's what I would, uh, you know, that's what I would enjoy doing. Um, and then I got to say, my fourth grade art teacher had a wonderful influence on me, uh, just kind of helped me discover the joy of art. And then after that, even more so than my college professors, was my high school art teacher. I had hmm. him my junior and senior year, and he was a gruff guy, very gruff <laughs> and rough and, uh, you know, kind of, uh, you know, hard on you. Um, yeah. but. Um, what an influence he had and he you know mentored me and um against my will entered some of my artwork uh, my senior year into a statewide competition in a um, county competition and i had <laughs> great well, i had said i won't do it i don't want to do it and he took two pieces that i had turned in and he filled out everything and uh, and put it out there, and I ended up um, winning best in show in both of them. 
get out and, of town. <laughs> yeah, so he That's just awesome. he well he was he was the one that gave me some confidence in what I was doing. As artists, we generally are not born with confidence. We're not necessarily, you know, uh, <laughs> that confident in in our abilities, especially compared to others. And I still think in my class there were better artists than me. But he really worked with me, and uh, you know, I've, I've never. I've never forgotten that. So as a high school kid, were you already starting to think, hmm, maybe I could do this for a living? I'm interested. Your dad's a banker. So what is he thinking yeah. at this point and <laughs> all of that? Well, what my dad was really, uh, you know, he, he pushed me. Um, uh, was okay if, you know, I went to art school or majored in art or whatever I did, um, but wanted me to get a, you know, continued education and then out of that, out of out of school, he wanted me to go into banking or something, some type of nine to five right. uh, job, which really was not my not my style. Um, and my mother was just always an encouragement, regardless of what I wanted to do. Um, so, coming out of school, I did what most artists do, and got a job in sales or something totally unrelated to art. <laughs> so. Um, and it's interesting. I look back on that and um, see how the Lord used every little bit of these experiences to form me into who I am now and giving me the gifts that I have now. Um, I had 10 years uh, working for two different companies, uh, first in real estate, and then I did seven and a half years working for Comcast in corporate sales. And it really taught me how to, you know, uh, you know, the kind of the, the rules of, of sales and uh, how to engage other people. Mm, right. Um, right. So, so there were tons of lessons there, um, you know, that I was able to learn. And then from there, um, I was meeting with one of my best friends over lunch, and he was a controller for a company outside of Philadelphia. And we were just kind of complaining a little bit about the, you know, the machine, the corporate machine. And I was pretty burned out at that point. Um, and we decided to both quit our jobs, our very well-paying jobs, and you know, go into a uh, open a gallery because we're, you know, two smart guys, and we, you know, tons of personality, no problem. We'll make this work. And was he so, an uh, artist as well, or or he uh, was the? Thank, no, no, thankfully not. Again, I'm always, <laughs> I'm always at least smart enough to link myself to someone smarter than me and yeah I mean he kind of liked art but for for him uh art it was widgets you know whatever we were selling was sure. you know uh product in product you know that kind of thing sure um and I say that uh with a great deal of respect because you know he kept our head above water and you know handled every bit of finances and taxes and what you know whatever we were doing um and uh so uh, that that was great. I was the creative end. He was the, uh, you know, he did the rest of it. He did the business part. So um, we did that for 12 years uh, with some success here and there. Um, and that ended up leading uh, about eight years into it uh, of having the fine art gallery. We had a uh, I think one employee, we had a, a gallery director and that led into um, uh, getting a small publishing contract with a, a printer with a, uh, out of New York. Um, so we, we started a publishing company along with this other, uh, of course we did this. Yeah, do you remember posters, Matt? Do you remember? <laughs> I think, uh, the, you know, yeah, just yeah. to, just to age us out a little bit. <laughs> You know, where you would go to the mall and you would, you know, pick go into frame, the poster pick shop. Poster, right, That's sure. it. Then, <laughs> then you'd go get your orange Julius. And when you came back, it was ready to go. <laughs> Fine art at its best, yeah, right? Exactly. <laughs> so that was, you know, we're kind of at the tail end of that. And, you know, um, the internet is humming along and we were selling a lot of prints online, um, you know, through our website. Uh, um, but this, uh, you know, this, this partnering with this, uh, this other publisher, uh, gave us the chance to do that on a very, very large scale. And, um, so we, we chose to, okay, the, you know, 
we're not going to be able to do this on our own, so we will do that. So we partner with a company called Bruce McGall Graphics out of New York. And they're the, to the best of my knowledge, they're the largest print publisher in, uh, in the world at the time. Wow. Um, and they had, you know, the idea was to get our line of prints, uh, you know, with our artists that we represented uh, out being sold in over 60 countries. Um, and then frame shops around the country here and um, sounded great. Um, and it just, it, that again, had some limited success, but then again, we, we ran straight into the dying of the poster market, you know, mm -hmm. the offset lithograph, the death of it. Um, so that just kind of ended up uh, just fizzling out, to be honest. Um, and after so much time and money and effort had gone into that, um, you know, there really wasn't anything we could do to salvage it. So I think um, that's what I love about your story, though, as I'm sitting here listening to it. It's like, you know, because all of us have these kind of ups and downs, roadblocks, walls we run into in our career. And some people allow that to just totally devastate them and take five or 10 years to get over. And it sounds like you just like, well, okay, that didn't work. I need to, you know, let's kind of pick it up and let's look for another direction. And I think there's, for all of us, especially for people that want to make a living as an artist, uh, there's got to be a certain amount of grit and just <laughs> the ability, ability yeah. to push through yeah. and reassess and take all the knowledge and experience that you have and go, okay, Lord, what's next? And yeah. that's just coming and, through so clear for your story. And that is, that is so true the way you put that, Matt. Um, you know, we have to realize, I mean, thankfully we are not just artists out there doing it by ourselves. We are first and foremost believers in Christ. And if we believe in Christ, then we know he has a good plan for us. Right. And if we believe in that, we can, you know, you, you just kind of keep trying, knowing that he's going to use these, um, you know, what the world might look at, or, you know, even, uh, we might look at as, wow, I, you know, I really failed there or that, that, you know, that attempt, there's no coming back from that. Mm. Well, you know, the, when that happens, I think we have to be, um, really time to open your eyes and look for what the Lord has for you next. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I don't, you know, right now I can look back, you know, being older, I'm 52 now and I can kind of look back at all of these things that have happened over the years and know, man, the Lord really was working um, for my success. Wow. You know, he was really working towards this to give me every tool that I needed so that when the time came for, for Asheville or for this, this moment in my life that, you know, it, it all came, it all came together. So talk about now, you know, you and Tina are working, you know, fast forward some years now, you guys are both mm -hmm. working in your business. You're obviously there painting and creating work. She's the gallery director if you will and, and yes. doing all the business end of things talk a little bit about the reality of that because i think you know so many artists out there have this dream of wow i would love to have my own gallery be selling my work interacting with the public and as i well know and you well know as soon as you have a a building and a studio and hours and all of that it's some of the glamour and uh <laughs> And all of that can, oh. can fade a little. And so talk a little bit about how you balance as an artist that, you know, being artistically and creatively inspired to do what you do. And yet at the same time, you're having to, to run a business and manage that on a weekly basis. Absolutely. Um, that's a great question. Um, the very first thing that we ran into uh, you know, which is before Tina joined up with me, um, is I had to learn to paint in front of people. Mm. Um, and then after learning to paint in front of people, I had to learn to talk to people while I painted. <laughs> um, so that, um, I, I'm trying to remember the, the quote by Chuck Close that says something about um, inspiration is for amateurs, professionals show up and get to work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that, that kind of resonates with me in that, you know, so often we are just waiting for inspiration uh, in order to, uh, to, to, to get to work, to, to paint, to do whatever it is our craft is that, 
you know, waiting for divine inspiration. And um, uh, art is like anything else. The more you do it, the easier it becomes, the better you get at it. Uh, as long as you're getting paint on the canvas um, or whatever it is that you're doing, um, you know, it's going to come easier. Mm -hmm. uh, we cannot make excuses as artists as to why we're not doing it, why we're not applying ourselves. Um, so the first thing I had to do was that, was learn how to um, be an artist in the River Arts District, which is not a normal thing for most artists. Yeah, um, somewhat like a zoo almost. Yeah, I tell people all the time that absolutely. people come yeah. in and they're looking at you, did you make all this? Well, actually I did. And, yeah. <laughs> <you know? laughs> And I'm trying to make something right now. You know? Yeah. So. so you, I mean, you, you want to be welcoming. Um, uh, you want to, you know, people have some strange questions at times. Sure. And you want to be able to be open to that. And uh, But you better get a thick skin uh, mm -hmm. because some of the things that people say, you know, there's no filter or something. And they'll, you know, say some kind of odd things to you. Uh, most of it's good, but occasionally you get a, uh, a bad one now and then and again you have to have a thick skin and just kind of let that go first thing i had to learn was how, was how to do that was how to um work in a very different environment than what i was used to uh had a wonderful studio in my home you know with surround sound music and windows on three sides of the building and skylights and i had light from every direction and now you know now i'm working like you said in an aquarium or in a zoo atmosphere where people are watching me, you know. Right. <laughs> uh, so you get used to that. Um, but uh, then we just, um, uh, what we've done, uh, at least in the studio here, which has been one of the most successful things for us, is trying to create an environment that we wanted to spend time in ourselves. Mm, yeah. um, we spend so much time here. Uh, you know, it's Tina and I and our four dogs, and we're here, uh, you know, we're here five days a week. And, um, you know, so you spend a lot of time in your studio. Uh, so, it, you know, creating a environment that you are anxious to be in uh, that you look forward to going to is, I think, important. Well, I think my, my, my spiritual gift is hospitality. Uh, I love to entertain. I love for people to be happy and feel at home and feel welcome and loved. And so kind of turning this space into something like that, that we could have people. We, we, we now have clients that have become friends that just, you know, they don't come in to buy art every time, but they're, they come by when they're in the area just to hang out, just to talk. Well, building you know, that connection is so important in any kind of sales anyway. And I think yeah. it's just, that's a, what, that's a big part of what I love about having a gallery is that people can come by and exactly. build a relationship yeah. with you and bring their friends when they're in town and exactly. that sort of thing. There's a real yeah. camaraderie that develops. So, Yeah, sure. There, there sure is. And, um, you know, people are kind of proud that they know you. And um, at least in Asheville, what I found is, is really neat. Um, Unlike most areas of the country right now where artists are looked at as like not having real jobs, um, here in Asheville, we're minor celebrities. Right. Um, so you have more opportunities than I have ever seen to uh, speak your mind, uh, talk about your faith, um, you know, with whether it's magazines or whatever. Um, I've been blessed to be able to get some uh, nice press where you know people call and want to interview me for something and um, you know they'll they really keep um, you know what you say uh, they keep uh, they're very interested in that people are interested in reading about what artists have to say here in Nashville. Talk a little bit about that dynamic you know I get this question all the time of well, Matt, you know, do you make Christian baskets or do you, and I'm like, well, I didn't know baskets could get saved. You know, it's like yeah, exactly. yeah. <laughs> people, people are Christians and people love Jesus yeah. and then people, you know, do what God's put on their heart to do. And so I, I think you and I are probably from the same perspective that, you know, I don't really try to sell Christian art, quote unquote. I try to live as a, as a person who loves Jesus and create out of that relationship and, Talk about though how you how that works for you and how 
that manifests itself for you because I know when you walk in, it's not the Philip D'Angelo Christian Art Studio, you know, it's just Phil D'Angelo Art. And so how do how does that work for you um, and how do you flow in that? Well, um, uh, I think that as Christians, we can be caught up in that mm. uh, and you can get caught up in a negative way where you, you feel like, OK, well, I, you know, I have a responsibility. I'm a Christian artist, so I have to paint crosses and I have to paint, um, you know, Jesus and I, I've got to paint angels. And, and I, you know, I don't think that is our responsibility. I think we were created by a creator to be creative. Mm. and um to enjoy that process yeah um if if you are um you know if you have a a a good relationship uh with with jesus and you're concentrating on that it's going to come out in your work yeah um we've uh, i don't do this on purpose but uh to me titles are very important Uh, i title all of my paintings and most of my titles come from uh, words or a series of words in the book of Psalms or mm. in praise and worship songs, you know, on mm. Sunday, uh, people think I'm not paying attention because I'm, as I'm singing, I'm writing things down, but that's what <laughs> I'm, it's like, wow, that is powerful. You know, yeah. you know, refuge that is what a wonderful, wonderful title for one of my paintings. So, um, uh, so, so that kind of, uh, it, it comes out that way. Um, I use a lot of implied symbolism on my work, um, and that gives me an, an easy way to share the gospel when people ask about it. Mm, uh, I, I use the divine proportion in all of my paintings, um, as do a lot of non-Christian artists. But, you know, I, I use it in, I use it because I think that's kind of God's thumbprint on yeah. creation. Well, it's part of the mystery of art, I think, is that we get to create out of this connection with him and mm-hmm. allow people to receive it and and respond to it the way that they are going to respond to it and allow the Lord to speak through that rather than trying to put our interpretation on what they're seeing. Exactly. Um, in fact, I read a book uh, a while back um, by Bill Hybels, and it's called uh, you know, I think it was walk across the room. I don't have to have somebody walk into my studio and 10 minutes later, I have them on their knees in the back of the <laughs> studio confessing Christ. Right. I, you know, what, what this said is I have to be open and willing to share my faith and I mm-hmm. have to be um, willing to take that person as far as they want to go at that moment. So that might just be hopefully putting some seed in some fertile ground there. Uh, That may be, but I am not responsible for the outcome. I'm supposed to do what I'm supposed to do. And the Lord is responsible for the outcome. It's his harvest. So uh, that I really, I really connected to. And that made um, how Tina and I act in here uh, much easier, you know, knowing what our, our responsibility is. So we've had some phenomenal conversations with people that have come up very naturally. Yes, naturally supernatural. And I think that's what yeah. you feel yeah. when you walk in to your studio is that you guys love people and you love art and you love Jesus and all of that comes out um, so beautifully. So, hey, you know, talk a little bit about, um, this is kind of, we're wrapping up. I'm thinking, you know, if you could look back you know, 20, 30 years to that younger Phil D'Angelo, who was, uh, you know, even in that uh, maybe a little bit longer than 30 years back in high <laughs> school and you, you won that best of show and uh, somebody, that kid with all these dreams and all that, but knowing all the things that he'd have to walk through, what would you say to him just as a, a piece of advice? And because uh, there's so many artists that are out there listening to the podcast that will probably be exactly where he is, no matter how old they are. I think I would say uh, to not quit mm-hmm. that to, um, well, listening to this podcast and any other podcasts that are going to teach you something, if you can glean anything from it, if you could take one nugget from here and one nugget from there and, and, you know, don't give up. It is not, I mean, choosing the road of an artist is not, an easy one. Um, it's very rewarding. I can't imagine 
doing anything else with my life. I, I would just say, keep at it, learn everything that you can um, and, and try to use uh, older artists, um, uh, people that you admire. Don't be afraid to ask. Uh, most of us are more than willing to share our mistakes with you so that you don't have to make them or share, you know, Hey, this is really working for me now. Um, you know, just over the years, you know, I, I know how to an approach a gallery. Um, there's correct ways. There's uh, different, you know, there's different ways to approach a gallery sure. and some of them are really bad. And I think <laughs> we've had phenomenal artists do it and do it wrong a number of times, get turned down and then they just give up. They just go get a job. I mean, cause it is important to pay the bills. Sure. Um, and, you know, on that note, let me just say, uh, you know, when I came to Asheville, it was not automatic success. It was, again, you know, I, I worked uh, as a gallery director for a gallery in town while I was building up my following here. Uh, right. You know, uh, building a collector base was it was a new collector base. My style was different. Everything was different when I moved to Asheville. So it was starting that process. It was a lot easier because I had already made mistakes and knew what I was doing. But you know, I still worked full time and then did this on, on the side as best I could. Uh, then I went part time, uh, you know, because I was doing more of this and then I was able to quit altogether. So it's not it's not a one step process, no matter right. what stage you're in. Uh, it's really not a one step process. It's a you know, you, you have to, um, you know, if you have a family, you know, if you're single, that's fine. Uh, but if you have a family, you know, that's your first responsibility is yeah. taking care of that. So, and I just so um, affirm that because I've seen that in my own life is that bridge of where you are now, where you're going. And as you're faithful with what God puts in your hand, you know, just like in Matthew 25, you've been faithful with little. Now I'm mm -hmm. going to make you ruler over much. And that's just, that's so good. So, yes. Well, I know people are going to want to connect with you, Phil, online. And uh, if you're listening to Phil and be like, I would, I just want to come visit his gallery or see his work or whatever. You can do that at philipdeangeloart.com. Uh, I know you're on Facebook and Instagram as well, Phil, so uh, and people can connect with you there. But thanks so much for taking the time to share your story and encourage um, all the artists that are out there that are wanting to be everything that God's called them to be in their life. Absolutely. Hey, thanks so much for spending a few minutes with me today on the podcast. Listen, I hope it's been a huge encouragement to you on your journey as an artist. Hey, also, before you leave, make sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of the other episodes of the Thriving Christian Artist Podcast. And also, be sure to connect with me on Facebook, Instagram, or at my website, which is matttommymentoring.com. Until next time, remember, you were created to thrive. Bye-bye.